This is DJI Mini 2, the smallest and lightest drone DJI offers right now. So my question for this video is how high can this drone fly? What altitude is still safe? This small drone fits in the category of under 250 grams, which in most country means that you can fly it without too much hassle when it comes to regulations. Maybe that's why it's so popular, especially as an entry-level drone, which was my case as well. This is my first drone, and even though I feel like I could go for an upgrade already after like a year of using it, it's undeniably a very powerful machine. I realized it recently on a trip to an active volcano in Guatemala. I was flying it at an altitude of 3,500 meters with strong winds close to an erupting volcano and this little guy managed perfectly fine. Why is this such a big deal? Simply because this drone is so small and so light and higher in elevation you go the air is getting thinner and thinner. Air density is just not the same as on sea level which means that the drone has to spend more energy to spin the blades faster to get off the ground. Just as we have problems breathing at such altitudes the drone has problem getting up. So after I flew it on an active volcano I became interested. What is the limit of DJI Mini 2. Officially on their website they state that Mini 2 can take off at 4000 meters of altitude which is already impressive on its own. But what if? What if you take it to a place like Peru where most of the popular hikes are above 4000 meters? Can it even get off the ground above 4000 meters? That's what I wanted to find out and took this drone to three different locations high up in the mountains. First stop was Laguna Paron and after hiking up a little bit to get the view of the lake we were at 4300 meters. I set up the drone and was a little bit nervous how is it going to behave. I really didn't want it to just get crazy and fly away or crash in the nearby rocks. I pressed the button for liftoff and it managed with no real issues. The only real problem I noticed was movement at slower speeds. I guess it's because of the thin air, the movement of the drone is a little bit clunky and not as responsive, but it wasn't that big of a deal. I easily managed to get off, get some footage and safely land again. This showed me that the drone can definitely take off at higher altitudes. The official number of 4000 meters has some sort of wiggle room, but how high can we go? The next stop was Laguna 69 sitting at 4600 meters. I know it might not sound like much, just few hundred meters difference, but at these altitudes every meter counts. Air is getting thinner and thinner making it increasingly harder to take off. And don't forget that this is DJI's smallest and lightest drone. If we were talking about their other products they might handle the altitude better but this is a very small device. We hiked up through beautiful surroundings and got to the lake. I set up the drone and got ready to take off. Another challenge in front of us and that is flying the drone at 4600 meters. This drone is just insane. With no problem it took off and I flew it all over the lake. That got me really curious, because our last test of this drone was at a place called Pastorure. It's a glacier sitting at 5000 meters. If we were able to take off at that height, it would mean 20% increase of what is promised on paper. But flying in Peru, high up in the mountains during a rainy season, wouldn't come that easy. It's raining, a little bit of snow maybe, the conditions are not that good, can't imagine the small drone taking off in this thin air. I was hopeful, I didn't want to give up just yet. This was after all my only chance to fly this drone at 5000 meters. I knew that I wouldn't get to this altitude for the rest of the trip, but the weather didn't care. Yeah, the weather is not getting better. <laughs> I don't think that I can fly anything here. <laughs> We had to start descending from the glacier as it seemed that this was not the day to fly the drone. Or was it? Okay, we got down to 4940 or something like that. And it's not snowing that much. I think this is my opportunity to try to fly the drone.
So yeah, we successfully flew this drone not only above 4000 meters, but got all the way to 5000 meters. After this I wouldn't be afraid to fly this drone even higher up, but that's maybe for another trip. I have to say that this is definitely not what this drone is built for, so if you're planning to fly this high, you're putting yourself at the risk of damaging the drone itself just because of the things I said before. The drone has to use more energy to spin the blades faster, so you might damage the motors and the battery as well. I was willing to try it because I felt like I have nothing to lose, except for the drone itself of course, but it was definitely an interesting experiment. I got more confident in flying in less than ideal conditions and now I know that this drone can handle much more than I would ever expect. But that's it for this video, I would appreciate if you click the like button if you made it all the way here. I usually talk about traveling but from time to time I like to talk about photography and I might add some drone stuff as well. So yeah, click the like button, subscribe and I will see you next time. But until then, ciao!